Stand on the edge of our mats and do a setup of the body. We'll start from the feet and work to get ankle knee hip alignment. So you want your ankles sitting directly underneath your hip joints, so not too wide apart. So we've got a bit of space between our feet and knees with the toes forward and the heels coming behind us. Let's start by taking a rock side to side, just transferring our weight from one foot to the other. As we bring our focus into the body, we want to feel that pressure through the soles of our feet as it transfers from one foot to the other. So we're really aware of them two extremes and then we find that middle point where we feel like we're balanced evenly through both of our legs and feet, gently pressing in the inside outside ball and the heel of the foot. So we feel centered and stabilized and then making sure that our knees are unlocked as we come up to the pelvis area and start with pelvic tilt. So just work to draw your tailbone a little bit more down towards the floor, towards your heels. Work to get a bit of length, a bit of movement if we can in the pelvis one way and then we're going to take it the other way and gently arch the back so we create a big curve in our lower back and then we're going to work to lengthen out and, and lose that lumbar spine curve as much as we can and then we take it back the other way and don't force anything that's uncomfortable but just see if you can work to get some movement even just a little bit of stretching to start to mobilize through our hips our lower back and awareness of our pelvis position and feeling the changes that happen when we move the pelvis. So we might need to work our tummy muscles and feel that tension coming in as we tighten to help us get a bit of a stretch through the back. And then you might also feel that pull and stretch into the front of your legs and the hips as the hips extend there as well, that little bit more. So let's find a neutral pelvis position now, as close to neutral as we can get it, where our pelvis is sitting level front and back. And then a small natural lumbar spine curve. So we get as close to that as we can. And then hold it there and bring the length into the rest of the spine. So we just start to get a bit taller. Think about lifting through the back of your neck though and the crown of your head so we don't end up pulling the chin upwards and over, hyperextending the neck. So lengthen neck with the natural curve of our neck and then shoulders drawing down our back, stabilizing our scapula. As we draw the shoulders down, just checking that we don't push the ribs forward. So just that little tuck in and down of the ribs to actually lengthen down the chest and the front to find rip it connection through the front. So we've got a good, balanced, neutral postural position. Arms relaxed by the sides, and then arms should sit in line with our hips there as they hang from the shoulders. And then we're gonna hold that position and we'll start by waking up our core muscles. Pelvic floor first of all, just take a natural breath in. As you breathe out, draw it up on the inside, activating your front and back pelvic floor muscles. Finding a maximum engagement and then working to hold it there while you breathe. So just natural breathing, really bringing our focus into the body even more. Our attention on the pelvic floor as we try and hold our engagement, but also aware that we're not bringing any unnecessary tension in anywhere else in the body and we're holding our neutral spine set up. And now let that pelvic floor engagement release down and try and do it slowly with control as much as you can. And we'll do it again, taking a breath in Breath out, we draw up on the insides, just front and back pelvic floor muscles engaging without clenching the bum anymore or tightening around the tummy anymore. Just the tension that was already there in your setup position and then the pelvic floor working from inside. And we can breathe, breathe comfortably while we hold it. Now slowly releasing it back down, really getting that control. Let's do it one more time, breathing in. Breathing out as we draw up on the inside without anything changing on the outside. Holding it when we find maximum engagement and letting the breath flow. Still aware we're keeping hold of our neutral spine. Or if we feel it starts to creep back to more of a natural posture that isn't neutral, work to bring it back. And this time from our full engagement, we're gonna to try to just release by 50%. So just a bit more focus and control. Then see if you can bring it down to 30% of your maximum engagement. So not actually letting go, holding a gentle engagement that we're gonna to work to sustain. And we're gonna do the same around the center now. So take a breath in. As we breathe out, we start to activate our tummy muscles, what we call our corset muscles, as we wrap around sides to front. And maybe you can wrap sides to back. Think of it like a bracing feeling as it comes in stronger until you find your maximum engagement and then work to hold that maximum engagement. So we really get the feel of these muscles being our focus, our dominant support. We wanna make sure they're working all the way through all of our exercises, not at this strong level, because we won't get to do that for a whole hour. So we're gonna just release that off by 50%. So it's a bit more comfortable. 
Then we bring it down to our 30%, where we've just got a gentle support system. That's enough to strengthen with, but we challenge it when we need to. Pelvic floor drawing up from underneath. We're in our neutral spine. We keep it all in place and we can start to focus on the breath now. So take a long breath in through your nose. Feel your ribs expand out into the front sides of your back. We're going to take a long breath out through the mouth and really feel them ribs closing in and down as we fully exhale. So just start a steady flow that works for you. So breath in. And out. Make sure you fully exhale. See if we can feel this kind of ballooning effect happening into the front, the sides, and into the back of our ribs. We're not breathing too low into our tummy, and we're not letting our shoulders lift while we breathe either. So it's just steady flow. Making sure we don't hold the breath. In through the nose. And out through the mouth. And we're really aware of all our other fundamentals that we've set up in place as we breathe in now and bring our arms up to our shoulders. And then we breathe out and continue to reach our extended arms up without extending our back, hold your neutral spine. Breath in, arms come back to shoulders, and then breath out, arms come back down by the sides. And we've even kept that balance on our feet even. So whole body awareness. Breath in, arms to shoulders, breath out, shoulders. They release, but they draw down the back. We're not pulling them up towards the ears. And then breath in, arms to shoulders. Breath out, arms down. So just a steady flow. Nice, easy movement to start as we mobilize the shoulders and the lats. But we really think about being able to keep focus on our setup, on all our fundamentals that we put in place. And being able to create flow with that, with the breath and our movements. So we move with the breath. We inhale to shoulder level. We exhale so the ribs are drawing in and down as we reach up. So we start thinking about our positions straight away, not just moving our body, our torso, with the movement of the limbs. We think about stabilizing in neutral, using our core, and then we get the stretch, the movement in the muscles that we want to. So let's do that one more time. Breath in, arms to shoulders. Breath out, arms reach up. We're in neutral at the top there with our arms lifted. Breath in, arms to shoulders, breath out, arms come down. This time we're going to warm up into the lower body, a little bit of a squat. So we just breathe in and we sink back and down through our hips. Our spine hinges forward, but we also keep it in neutral as it hinges forward. And then breath out, we hinge back up, extending back through our hips. So all the movement comes from hip flexion, breath in. But we draw the hips back to create this little V shape with our spine. We're lengthened all the way through to the back of the neck. And our shoulders stay in the back as we gently lift the arms just to shoulder level. Breath in to come down. Just be aware of your arms as they lift that you're not starting to take the rib cage up with your arms. Keep that rib hip connection through the front of the body. Breath in to come down. Just be aware of our knees as well. We're going to work to keep our knees back as far as we can in line with our ankles, but also keeping our balance while we do that. Breath in to come down. Just a gentle warm up standing for the body tonight, mobilizing the major joints and muscles. We're gonna do one more here. Breath in to come down. Nice length through the spine, breath out. We come up and we know we found and held neutral at the top there. Now let's mobilize the spine through flexion. Take a breath in, breath out. Start by tucking your chin to look at your feet, the space between your chin and chest. You start to then drop your rib cage down to your hips as far as you can without your hips actually moving. This creates this rolling of the spine, segmental movement. We continue letting our hips move now, but we keep that tummy support working for us. Our legs support and bending the knees a bit more will actually support your lower back a bit more. When we get to the bottom, take a breath in and breath out and start to stack your spine back up again. Work to get your pelvis back into that neutral position first. Then stack your ribs, your shoulders drop into the back and then the crown of the head lifts and we stack back to neutral at the top. One vertebrae at a time, let's do it again. Breath in, feel your ribs expand, breath out. So don't start moving till you're breathing out and then working rib to hip, continue the breaths. Take as many as you need, but work your Pilates breath all the way through your movement here. Full inhale and exhale. Let go of your arms if it's comfortable. Let them relax, take a breath in at the bottom. Breath out as we step the spine, staying as balanced as we can on both feet. Working to get that vertebrae stacked individually, as much movement through the spine as we can comfortably. Shoulders down the back, crown the head lifts. This time we're going to transition down straight onto the mat. So take a breath in. 
breath out, we roll down, we continue the breath, flow, we're going to push our weight forward as we come lower, making sure it's coming into the balls of the feet, not more into our heels, so our weight is forward, the tension is in the front of the body, back of the body stretching, but between the legs at the bottom, bend your knees more, get your hands pressing flat and start to walk them forward to press your knees down on the mat now. Keep walking the hands until they're either directly underneath your shoulders, or if that isn't comfortable for your wrists, take them a little bit further forward so you've got less extension of the wrist. We're going to warm the wrists up a little bit here. So I want you to just rock forward on the wrist, so you really create extension, you'll feel the pressure. Rock back, we create and we release that tension. We rock forward and we rock back. And now we're going to find a centre point. We're going to rock to the right side. We're going to come centre, we're going to rock to the left side and come centre. Let's do that again, one each side, just bringing a bit more mobility into the wrist. Obviously you're going to feel that load as well, we're not going to stay here too long. But now find a middle point, we want to check that we're centred, the knees are under the hips, wrists under the shoulders or again slightly further forward. Now we're going to gently drop our shoulder blades into the back and then free our head and tailbone to lift a little bit to extend the back. And then we're going to go the other way and cat curl the spine, pushing our chest up, tucking our tailbone down to the back of the knees. And then do that again, just one more time, just getting a bit more movement into the scapula, into the spine, but for extension. And then cat curl in the spine, just warming up a little bit more there. And now find a neutral spine here, guys. So neutral spine, just like when we were standing, we want shoulders tucked into the back, lengthen through the neck with a natural curve of our neck. And then natural curve of the lower spine, but not too arch, rib hip connection underneath, and then activate the core. So tighten gently around your center and draw it for your pelvic floor. Take a breath in here. As you breathe out, just start by sliding your right leg away behind you. Just stretch it from hip to toe. So we bring hip extension in. Breath in to bring it back, place it underneath your hip. Breath out to slide your left leg away and just stretch it. Start to activate the legs through stretching and stretching into our hips. Breath in to come back. We stay neutral, we stay as stable as we can. Breath out, stretch the right leg. Our knee comes back directly underneath our hip on the way down as we breathe in. We're not leaning side to side as we breathe out and stretch through our left leg. Now breathe in, bring the left leg down. Breathe out, slide your right leg away, stretch it and see if you can lift it a little bit now without your spine moving. Now hold it lifted. Breathe in, pull your heel to your bum, flexing at the knee. Breathe out to straighten, extending at the knee. Just hold it strong in your position. Breathe in, bend. Breathe out, straighten. Just think about the position of your spine, whether your shoulders are still tucked into your back. Breathe out, straighten. Really stretch it away. One more on this side. Breath in. Breath out. Now breathe in, bring it down. Sit underneath the hip. Breathe out, stretch your other leg away. Add the lift. Holding the lift before you start doing the, um, the knee flexion, check your spine, your balance. And now breathe and bend the knee, heel to bum, breathe out to straighten. Well done. So we've really warmed up the legs a bit more, but through extension of our hip and quad through the front of the leg, and actually working into the back of the leg. We're challenging stability, so we're working at all our core muscles as we hold strong and neutral, and we work down the arms and through our shoulders. Let's do two more here. Breathe in. Breathe out, stretch the leg away, as much intention here as we can get with our movements, and then bring the knee down, sit it underneath your hip, but then sit back on your legs and take a little stretch out for a moment, guys. Just release the wrist for a minute, sit back on your feet, and maybe lift your fingers up towards the ceiling to feel that stretch for extension there of the wrist, but without all the load going through them this time. And breathe into your back as you work to hold this um, position for a moment. Good. So let's come back up and just do one more. So wrists under the shoulders again, knees underneath the hips, but we're going to slightly see curl our spine. So we're just going to push our chest up a little bit more towards the ceiling. We're going to tuck our tailbone a little bit more down towards the back of our knees. So we round that lower spine, activate our tummy and our chest a bit more, and now we're going to bring it into the arms by flexing at the elbows. So as we breathe in, we start to bend the elbows. Try and get them pointing towards your knees as much as you can. See how low you can go. And then breath out, push back up. Now before you go again, check your position at the top. 
Push back up through the chest, tuck the shoulders in the back, slightly rounded lower back as well. So tilt in the pelvis, then breathe in, start to bend the elbow, shoulders tuck into the back still, breath out push ups. We don't, if we get the technique on these guys, we don't have to do many. I'm really feeling that work. But each time I'm coming up, I'm really pushing the shoulders down the back, pushing the chest up at the same time and tilting the pelvis. I'm bringing it back in a little bit more each time and trying to see how long I can keep it, real good awareness of it, as I bend my elbows and turn them in to point towards my knees. One more. Maybe you've done more than me, but doesn't mean you've worked harder. So really think about technique, squeeze them elbows in, push up, and now again, sit back on the legs. Really reach your arms in front of you now, splay your fingers out, and press your palms into the mat, and let that stretch all the way down the back of the body. Now let's increase that stretch on one side a little bit before we move on. So bring your arms around to one side. Just start to create that openness through that open side of the body, up the spine, side of the body and into the armpit area, maybe down the back of your arm where you worked it as well. And then come back to the center and then bring your arms around to the other side. And just, just as far as comfortable for you, without pulling on the neck and breathe into that stretch. And then we're going to come to centre and bring ourselves up and around. And we transition now into our next position, our seated position. Shuffling forward on the mat, so we've got enough room for our head to come down behind us when we decide to come down onto the mat. You know you're going to need some support for your head, have that ready as well. And then just have your legs hip width distance apart here and see how tall you can get seated up on your sit bones with the crown of your head pulling up towards the ceiling. And then letting our shoulders drop into the back and our arms just relax by the sides with the palms sitting on the mat here. Now let's just see if we can do a bit of pelvic tilting here first. So we're really tall. Take a breath in. Breathe out. Just try and tuck the tailbone a little bit and activate the tummy. And then breathe in and come back up. That's it. And then breath out, tuck. So we're not going to hinge back on the hips, forward and backwards. We really see if we can actually not work more into our hip. Now this can be challenging if you're already feeling it in the hip just by sitting there. But see if you can start to release the hip and actually activate lower tummy and stretch between the back of your ribs and your lower back there, your hips. One more breath in lift, breath out tuck. Now let's add some movement. So we start to flex the spine again now to bring us down. Take as many breaths as you need as you start to keep pushing your ribs forward as you're curling underneath your centre. Now you may feel you can go all the way to the bottom. Have a go if you want to on the first one and see how you get on. At the bottom we should be in as neutral of a spine as we can. We don't want a big gap in our lower back. We pull our toes towards the shins. We breathe in and curl the head and shoulders. We breathe out. We can use our elbows and push them into the floor if we need to. As we roll the rest of the way up, find that lift, that length back to where we started in a lifted neutral spine. Let's try again guys, breath in at the top, really lifted, breath out, pelvic tilt, and start to come under, shoulders sit in the back, there's length in our neck, with the crown of the head still reaching to the ceiling, even though we're curling tailbone towards our feet, see if you can do it with the arms by the sides, they're there for support, but we're going to not use them unless we have to, and see how much we can control that rib to hip, right to the bottom, and how connected our back is with the mat at the bottom with our legs extended, so really challenge that. And then breathe in, carry your head and shoulders, breathe out, push rib to hip, keep the shoulders in the back, elbows can push into the mat a little bit if we need to, rolling through and finding that lift, that length at the top here, guys. Well done, okay. So you can either stay with your legs extended to do a bit of rotation now for the spine, or if you feel more comfortable, feel free to cross your legs, or just bend the knees a little bit and sit on something if you want to. If you really struggle when you're seated and you're feeling it in your hips, by sitting on something and raising yourself a bit, that will release that tension a bit more. So see how you get on. And it may help you get a much more lifted spine. We're just gonna bring our hands across the chest, shoulders sit in the back. We move our rib cage, nothing below moves. We keep it strong and stable around that pelvis. So take a breath in here. Breathe out and start to turn your ribs to one side. Just let your shoulders, your arms and your head turn with the ribs, not independently, not pulling on them. Breath in, come centre. And then breath out as we turn the other way. We just want to have really good awareness of where our movement is coming from. 
We want to start to feel the stretching across the back, the back, back of the ribs in, our, in the thoracic area of the spine. We don't want to feel any tension in our lower lumbar spine. We're not twisting there. And think about how lifted your spine is, guys. So you don't want to be hanging around down here. Really lift. Imagine your back is up against a wall. Have a feel. Check. Get that, start getting that body awareness. And then the only movement is the ribs. We're not trying to pull our shoulders or turn our chin to our opposite shoulder. Good technique we're looking for. Okay, let's do one more. Make sure you've been both sides the same. If you can remember which side you started on. Just challenging that little twist, that rotation, and then coming back to the center. Okay, now we're gonna take our legs back out in front of us. We're gonna do one more seated exercise, which brings extension back into our legs and hips. It is a bit more challenging, Place your hands so your wrists are sitting underneath your shoulders. Fingers are coming forward towards the feet. Now this is your start level and we just bend the knees and place our feet on the floor, still hip with distance apart. Now you might just start with a tiny little lift and that will be enough for you. Don't worry if you can't get the full extension and watch on the first one if you need to. So we're just gonna extend our knees and lift our bum off the floor. So we breathe in. We breathe out and we start to lift and we stretch to extend the hips and come into a reverse plank. And we try and squeeze the bum as well if we can. And then we breathe in and come back down and we let our bum rest on the floor. That's our first level. Now make sure you keep shoulder stability. So shoulders need to be pushing into the back all the time. So breath in, breath out, extend, try and squeeze the bum, stretch the hips. Well done guys. Breath in. Come down, check the shoulders haven't gone up to the ears, they're tucked in the back. Breath in, breath out. Stretch, squeeze. Option, we breathe in, we round the spine a little bit to keep our bum off the floor, we fully extend our legs, and then we breathe out and come back up. So much more challenging for the upper body and the core. Have a go if you want to. Breathe in, curl the spine, extend the legs, breathe out, we come back up and squeeze. Just an advanced option if you can do it. Curl the spine is important. That's what keeps your bum from touching the floor and your shoulder stability, not how long your arms are, okay? Or how big your bum is. Let's do one more if we can. Curl the spine, shoulders are in the back, and then coming up one last time, extending, squeezing the bum, and then we're gonna come down and release, and we're gonna give them wrists a big, some big circles, just releasing any tension them. In and well done guys, and circle them the other way as well. And then let your arms relax by your sides, lift your spine. We're gonna roll down one more time now to transition onto the mats. And if we get on, all right? Breath in at the top, breath out, start to curl under. Let's get that stretch through the back, through flexion again. Working our tummy muscles, stretching the legs away from us. Arms are there if we need them for support as we try and connect as much of our back with the mat as we can on the way down. But then we're going to bring our arms above the head and take a little stretch out. Full extension for the body, right through to our fingertips. So we stretch the arms and wrists, right from our hips down to our toes. And you can let your back extend off the mat there as well. And then when you're ready, bring your arms around and down by your sides. Bend your knees and place your feet on the floor now. Setting our legs up in a right angle position. So have a little look down the side if you're not sure. And we're going to check we've got that little bit of space between our feet and our knees with the toes pointing away and the heels coming towards us. And then we let our arms relax by the sides, pelvic tilt here, so gently flatten your back into the mat, it isn't naturally already flat. Maybe feel the tailbone tilt up a little bit at the bottom, and then take it the other way and gently arch your back. And then press in and flatten, rocking our pelvis one way, and then taking it the other way. And we feel that space being created now let's find neutral pelvis here on the mat. So we want the back of the hips pressing flat. We want to feel that, and it's even both sides, and it's level from belly button down to pelvic bone. We're then going to make sure our ribs are pressed in and down as well. So we lengthen the spine out without tilting our pelvis, but we shouldn't have more than a tiny two finger gap where the natural curve of our lower spine is. And then two fingers shouldn't be able to move around there. So we are, we are connected with the mat. Shoulders drawn down the back, stabilizing the scapula, arms relaxed by the sides, we're lengthening through the neck and we're looking at the ceiling. And this is where we decide whether we need some neck support. If we're feeling like it's pulling or the chin wants to keep pulling back or the ribs want to lift, then it's worth having some support underneath your head. 
So you can relax here in neutral and isolate your core. So gently tighten around your center, draw up through the pelvic floor, just like we've practiced at the beginning. Just start with your gentle engagement and we'll start with a mobility exercise. So we're just gonna do a hip opener first. Breath in. As we breathe out, we just bring our right leg out to the side, opening into our hip at the top of the leg without the um, pelvis moving with the leg. Breath in, come back. Ribs expand, breath out, left leg comes out to the side. Make sure your foot just turns out with your legs, so no pulling on the ankle joint or up in the knee joint. Breath in to come back. Just light on the leg as it kind of floats out to the side where your core is working to keep you stabilized. Try not to use the arms if you can. So think about isolation of your core here. Great way of building strength around that center. Think about bracing all the way around, just like we practiced at the beginning but with everything else relaxed, just that gentle drawing up of your pelvic floor from underneath and remembering shoulder stability, not shoulder tension. So we're not kind of gripping and tensing up into our neck. We're just feeling our shoulders sitting down the back there. Okay, make that the last one on the left guys and come back to center and check your position before we start to challenge and lift our legs. Start with the right leg, take a breath in, Breath out, bring your right leg up to a tabletop position. So knee in line with the hip, shin in line with the ceiling. Take another breath in. Breathe out and bring your left leg up to tabletop. And we're just gonna check both them knees are in line with the shins, uh, with C, uh, hips and both shins are in line with the ceiling now. But now check that your back is flat in the mat. There's no gap. If you're lengthened, you're flat, shoulders are in the back still, but your arms are still relaxed and so is your neck. So your tummy is the focus, the dominant support holding you up here. Now we can add into this by moving at the hip. So we're breathing and lower our right foot, extending at our right hip to tap our right foot down. And then we breathe out, flex at our right hip to bring that leg back up. So try not to move from the knee joint. Let's try the left. Breathe in to lower. Now you don't have to come all the way to the floor. Breathe out to come up. If you do come down to the floor, don't let the weight of your leg go into the floor. So you're going to always be in control at your center, like you're dipping your toe into water as you breathe into lower. And as you breathe out and pull your leg up, think about your core actually drawing the leg back up into that tabletop position. So we really get maximum core work here, focusing on our center for our support. And we really focus on it when we're working in this position and doing flexion with the hips and movement of the legs and arms. Breath in to lower, last one on the left, breath out, come up. Now breathe in, lower your right foot back down, keep it neutral, breathe out, lower your left foot back down. And just check that your spine didn't move, hopefully we're still in exactly the same place we were. Now bring your arms up in line with your shoulders, keep your shoulders tucked into your back. Take a breath in here, breathe out and curl your head and shoulders off the mat. Now your arms are gonna move with you, closer to your legs and you're gonna look at your thighs, your pelvis is still sitting level at the bottom there. Breath in to come back down. Breath out, activate the abs. Think ribs push into hips to draw the head up and the shoulders. Your head lengthen your head and neck up and out of your shoulders. Now, if you struggle with the neck, if you need some support, just place one hand behind the head to help you take that bit of pressure out of the neck and really focus on the abs. And then just let the other arm move with the body. Um, as the shoulders naturally move with the curling of the spine. Feeling our abs, no movement at the bottom of the spine there. And try not to use your legs to do the work. Let's do one more. Breath out, we curl up. Looking at our thighs and then breath in to come down. Breath out to hold, keep your arms lifted, your shoulders tucked into the back, but let your neck relax. Leg extension, starting on the right leg, take a breath in. Breathe out, slide your right leg down the mat and stretch it from hip to toe, really activate it, but check you're holding neutral spine. Breath in, bring it back. Just a right angle position, breath out, slide your left leg away and stretch it from hip to toe. Breath in to come back. We're really aware of our connection with the mat as we breathe out again and slide our right leg and really stretch it. Get that right up into the top of the leg, into the hip muscle. Let's do one more on the left. Breath out, stretch your left leg away, and then breathing in to come back. Breathe out to hold. Just taking a moment to check. We're still in neutral spine. Shoulder stability, even though their arms are lifted. 
No tension in the neck, your core is working gently, it's isolated. And then take a breath in now and breathe out and bring that right leg back to a tabletop position. Take another breath in, breathe out and bring your left leg up with the arms lifted as well still. But let's just check that our back is really flat into the mat. So if you think your ribs can press a bit flatter, then do it. If you think your lower back can press a bit flatter into the mat without moving your legs, don't move the knees over the hips and curl the spine. Think about length with your right angle position, guys. And you'll really get that focus, that support, and you'll feel it in your tummy. Okay, now take a breath in. Breathe out and curl your head and shoulders really slowly off the mat. Gently round through the thoracic spine without pulling the neck or pulling your chin to your chest. Bring your arms long. Turn your palms to face the floor with your arms hovering off the mat. Check that pelvis is in neutral and start to pump your arms. Breathe in, in, two, three, four, five pulses and exhale, two, three, four, five pulses. So this is our position. We can adjust it. So if it hurts our neck, we can bring our head down, but we still make sure the ribs are pressed in. If we can't work two legs in tabletop, we'll bring one foot onto the floor. Maybe swap in after every couple of breaths and full pulses. So you get the movement of both legs. You get them both working, so you get that balance. That's good. Or we just hold here, really strong and stable. No jolting of the body, no flapping at the joints. So we're strong right through to our fingertips. We feel our abs are in charge of holding us up and holding our legs up. But now we're gonna bring our hands behind our head, our elbows wide, and we're gonna take that pressure off the neck and see if we can lift for a single leg stretch. We draw our right knee in, we stretch our left leg from hip to toe, start close to the ceiling and see how you get on. And then we breathe in to swap for two and breath out swap for two. I want you to take your time and work to get really good alignment guys of your ankle, knee and hip on both legs as they draw in and out. Good joint alignment, good balanced muscle activation in the legs, stability of our pelvis at the same time. Well done. Let's bring some oblique work into it. So we bring our elbow across to our opposite knee as it draws in. We create a little bit of rotation at our rib cage. So we're just lifting that shoulder across. We're not twisting at our necks. If you want variations here, you can just stick with legs or bring your feet on the floor and just do the upper body. Let's go for one more breath here and then release your knees in and release your head down gently onto the mat. Pull the knees into the chest, guys. That's it, let it go. Let it all relax a little bit. We should be feeling that work really um, dominant in our tummies when we're doing this. Watch it, it's not just the whole body intention and you're not feeling like you're being supported by your center and you'll know when you've got it you'll know that you're really feeling that you're in control from here from that powerhouse in the middle and then the limb movements are working around that on top of that okay let's try one more so let's um, try scissor tonight as well stretch your left leg down the mat fully extend it and straighten your right leg and hold on to the back of your right thigh now if you can't work a straight leg scissor go for a little bit more of an angle with the legs you can even go back to tabletop and again you can have your head up or down so if you can lift your head just curl your head and shoulders back off the mat always have a look at the pelvis before you start moving so really work that length with just that rounding of thoracic spine space between the chin and chest breathe and pull your right leg first Bring your left leg up and stretch your right leg away and pull that left leg. Breathe in, swap, nice and slow to start. Breathe out, swap back. And we really want to feel that opposition, that stretch and pull. And the higher you swap the leg, so you could even be bringing one leg up before you bring the other one down, that's going to make it much easier for you. To advance it, we speed it up. We center the legs further away from the hip line. We can add a little pulse, so we can pulse for two, Pulse for two. That's going to create a little bit of instability as well, where we have to challenge the core a bit more. All right then, guys, one more. Whichever option you're doing, and then release the knees in, and release your head down again. Well done. Let the neck relax. Let the whole body relax. Place your hands on your knees. Circle your legs around in your hips. So just start to loosen around the whole hip area. And then we're going to glue our legs together and roll our lower backs around on the mat as well. Give them a little massage one way a couple of times and then take it the other way. And let's take a full body stretch. Place your feet on the floor. Extend your legs down the mat. Wait for the same time now. 
arms above the head, take a big reach, right foot to your fingers, right foot to your toes and let your back extend off the mat so we hopefully get a bit of a stretch through the abdomen there as well down the front there where we've been working and just hold it for a few moments and breathe into it lengthen the back of the neck okay guys well done let's roll onto the side so come over onto the side whichever side you want to do first we're going to work um, our legs in flexion again here, our hips and our knees, first of all. So bring the knees up in line with your hips. It's like you're in tabletop, but you've actually come onto your side. So just check that your knees are really coming up, you know, in line with your hips, and then your feet are coming in, so your legs are in a right angle position. Now you can lie with your head rested here on your arms, so you get any tension out of the neck, just lengthen the neck. We want our whole spine lengthened. So our tailbone is lengthened away down behind us. We've got rib hip connection through the front and our core muscles are engaged here. I'd work with a hand on the hip so you can find where your hip joint is and make sure that that hip bone doesn't move with your leg as you're going to lift it. It's going to work into the upper glutes and obviously you might work it into that, you'll feel inside of the leg as well. So we're going to lift the whole leg up. So we breathe in, we breathe out and lift, knee drawing up towards the ceiling, hip opens. And then breathe in to come back down with control. Breathe out. Make sure you're lifting from your knee, opening up, not from trying to pull your foot up to the ceiling. The lower part of the leg's just coming along for the ride. You know, you're not using it. In fact, you're trying to keep that leg as relaxed as you can and actually think about the muscle you want to do the work to lift your leg, which is upper glute muscle. The dominant work here. Core work holds our spine where it is. So we Tighten gently around our centre, we draw up through pelvic floor, no tension in our upper body, just shock, gentle shoulder stability. And think about where you're feeling that work, guys, when you're doing the lift of the leg. Breath out, stretch it open into the hip, maybe create some instability as we use the glutes to lift that leg. Squeeze, well done, just watch that foot isn't being forced um, to try and lift you and come higher. Hold it at the top, check that the foot isn't coming up higher than your knee, that's just kind of hanging there. And see if you can just do some little pulses. And the more you try and not use the leg and use the bum, the harder it will get and the more you'll feel it. Let that lower part of the leg become a bit heavy and you'll feel the difference. Well done, one more breath here. And then let it come down and release. Good. Bring your legs out in front of you. Push yourself gently up to a seated position. We're going to stretch that side out and then we'll come straight down and do the other side. So lift your spine as much as you can. Draw your knee in and across. You will stretch all the way down that leg in case you did feel it a bit more in the leg as well. But hopefully we've got the glutes working. And then if you want to, if you've got the mobility, feel free to wrap your arm around opposite arm and add that little bit of rotation if you're not quite getting a stretch into the bum. So I want you to make sure you find your stretch in that glute muscle, which hopefully you also felt working in the exercise. And just hold it and breathe into it. Well done, guys. Okay, release. Let's come down to the other side and do the same. So get them knees up, right angle positions. It's like we're in tabletop on our back and then we come over onto the side. So we've length, we're already in a lengthened spine, we're having a feel in the back if we're not sure that that's lengthened, right down to our tailbone one way, crown of the head the other way. Relax the head and the neck completely and the top arm. I think core muscles activating here, grip of connection, hand on the top of that hip there, and then we're ready to move. So breath in, breath out, we open from the hip, lift from the knee, as far as we can without actually moving the hip bone. So breath in to lower, Breath out, pelvis stays where it is. Think corset muscles pulling the hip bones in towards each other in the middle as the knee pulls out. That's your opposition. And remember, we're not pulling, we're not trying to pull through here, through the side of the leg. It's opening the knee, just like when we're lying on our back and we do our hip opener. It's exactly the same movement, but because we have to lift the weight of the whole leg, obviously we're working into the bum there. Breath in to lower, breath out, core working to hold a stable. But challenge the opening of your hip, as, uh, the stretching of the muscle and the inner hip as much as you can to get the most out of the exercise and really get 
they map of glutes work, especially if they're not naturally quite functional, if you're not doing lots of exercises with glutes, which you all are, because you're all working with me, and it's something we focus on. So let's hold it at the top and pulse it now. So, yeah, so we're upper glutes, and you'll feel the difference when we come to working in bridges, where we work into glute maximus. It's just below the hip here, um, just um, below the hip, top of the bum, Squeeze, try and let that lower part of the leg hang a little bit heavier. You can always bring the hand down in front here if you need to for a bit more stability. One more breath if you can, well done guys. And then bring that knee down. Ooh, let it relax and then bring your legs out in front. Push yourself up to seated. Let's bring that top leg up and over and give it a stretch out all the way into our bum if we can. So lift the spine, draw your knee in and across. Feel that pull coming down. Wrapping the arm around if you're not quite getting enough of a stretch into the bum and add in the rotation. And then once, you're, once you find the stretch, just try and let go into it a bit more. Using your breath, check your shoulders have dropped, you know, in the back, you're not pulling or twisting on your neck. Just relax and soften through the upper body and stretch the bum there. Really good. Well done, guys. Okay, so let's release. Give both legs a little shake out in front of you there. Come down onto your front. So we're going to work in a prone position next of all to work into the back of the body a bit more. We've opened up our upper glutes and stretch our hips open a bit. But now we're going to think about lengthening on our fronts to work all the back of the body. Obviously, we need to make sure we've still got tummy support though so we don't overload our lower back. So let's get in a good position first. So shoulders tuck down the back. We're lengthening through the back of the neck. Arms can be wherever you want for now, where you get the pelvis in the right place. Try doing a pelvic tilt here, so try and pull your tailbone a little bit more towards your heels. See if you get a little bit of movement, a lengthening of the back, a bit of extension in the hips as well, and activation of the tummy and potentially your glutes. And then let it go back the other way, and then it all relax. We're going to try and press our belly button into the floor and extend our back a bit, and then we're going to tuck again. So really challenge them two extremes. Play around with it a little bit. It's just, it's only going to be a small movement, but you will feel the tension change as you change the position. So one way and then the other. So you're really aware of when you're not supporting yourself on your front. So now tuck and hold. Find your neutral. We can have a natural small lumbar spine curve. But if we do suffer with the lower back, it's worth just challenging that tuck a little bit more to make sure you don't cause any unwanted stress in the lower back. Tummy support. Pelvic floor as well from underneath. And then bring your arms slowly up above your head. Bring them up slowly so you don't just pull yourself out of that neutral spine that you just found. Make sure you can still hold it. And your belly button is not going to press any flatter into the mat. And then take a breath in. Breathe out and stretch your right arm above you and stretch your left leg away behind you. Maybe they'll lift a little bit if you've got the strength and flexibility, but don't force it. Breathe and release them down. Breathe out, stretch your left arm above you, right leg stretches away behind you. And then breath in to come down. Breath out to swap. Now you can even let the chest lift and the head, but you're lengthened through the back of your neck. Breath in to lower, so we stretch and work the muscles down the back, through our arms, through our legs, we're stretching our hip. Potentially we might get a little bit of glute activation. Again, if they're functional, if you're managing to hold a good strong position, you're still working your tummy muscles, your belly button isn't pressing any flat into the mat. Okay, last one. Finish it on left arm, right leg, and then release it down. Now let's bring our arms all the way down by our sides. So opposite position for the arms. Still tucking though in our neutral pelvis with our tummy engaged. We're going to pull the crown of the head up above us and then we're going to pull the shoulders and the arms down towards our feet. So breath in, breath out, arms pull down the back of the shoulders. We open the chest but we lengthen through the back of the neck. And then breath in to come down. Breath out, tummy's tight, shoulders pull down. Look down at your max, don't hyperextend your neck. Breath in to come down. Now if you struggle with the back, if that's going into your lower back, bring your arms into a goalpost position instead. And do your gentle back extension exactly the same way but with that bit of arm support if you need it, guys. So you've got an option. But tighten the tummy. Keep tucking the tailbone that little bit as you're coming into that gentle back extension, pulling the shoulders down. Now I'm going to give you a bit of a challenge. See if you can come up and hold. 
Now think about where the work is. It should be in the muscles down the back, not pressure or pain in your lower lumbar spine. So do not do this exercise if you can feel it. Now starting on the right arm, breathe in, breathe out, bring it, extend it out in front of you, and then breathe in, bring it back round and down to the side, breath out, bring your left arm round, extend it in front of you there, and then breathe in to bring it back, reach back to the feet, breathe out, right arm comes round and reaches above us, breath in, come down, one more on the left, breath out, coming round, reaching forward, Breathe in, bring it back down, and then breathe out and release. Well done, how did we go on? Okay, let's bring our arms back into a goal pose position now, and really let your arms relax, your shoulders sit in your back. Let your forehead rest on your mat, or you can always rest your forehead on your hands if you want to. Focus on the lower body again. So breathe in, breathe out, and stretch both legs away behind you now, so we feel the tension hopefully coming into our glutes. We're going to tuck our pelvis a little bit more and just work a little bit more opposition if we can get it. So we're really strong around the tummy. Now we're going to have a swim with our legs. So we're letting our forehead rest, our neck relaxed, our arms are relaxed, shoulders sitting in the back, tummy muscles working, legs kicking, right from the top of the hip if we can, down to our toes, we're not bending at the knees, stable pelvis, working our Pilates breath round into our back, Expanding, closing. One more breath here. Let it relax, guys, let it release. Well done, good work. Pop your arm, one arm underneath you, and that help you transition onto your back. And then we're gonna hug our knees into our chest there, wrapping our arms around the legs for a moment, and curling up a little bit through the lower spine if we can. And we'll take a little rock side to side here and just give our back a little massage on the mat, right from our shoulders, all the way down to our hips and just relax into that we we'll take a few breaths so let the tension go just for a moment before we go into doing some bridging okay so when you're ready place your feet on the floor now get your ankles sitting directly underneath your knees but your feet and knees are just that little bit apart that hip of distance apart toes pointing away heels coming towards you and then start with a neutral spine, even though we're going to be moving the spine, find that neutral position first. So level pelvis, ribs are pressing flat, shoulders in the back, arms relaxed. Let's turn our palms up towards the ceiling, see how much we can keep our arms relaxed tonight when we do our initial bridges. Core muscles gently engaged, take a breath in, breathe out, imprint your spine into your mat, so flatten your back, tighten around the centre, obviously drawing up gently through pelvic floor. And start to peel your tailbone up off the mat first. Press your feet in. One vertebra at a time. Feel the weight start to transfer up your back. Think about lengthening through the front of your legs. Like your knees are being pulled away from your hips. Your hips start to extend, but we don't overextend the back. So we feel like the hips are pulling back towards the ribs. As the ribs sit lower than the hips, let's see if we can activate the glutes. So squeeze your bum at the top. And then taking a breath in at the top. Breathe out and start to roll your spine back down into your mat. One vertebra at a time. Keep the tilt of your pelvis. And then we're going to imprint the spine and come back through to neutral. And then we'll try again. Breath in. Breath out. Imprint. So real good awareness of your connection with the mat. Feel how it changes. How the pressure moves up the back. But it's really gradual as much as our mobility will allow. And then we're thinking about this length, like our knees are being pulled away. Not so much that we're trying to thrust our hips right up to the ceiling and lift our ribs. We're just trying to stretch our hips, squeeze our bums. When we find that point where we've got glute activation, take a breath in and breathe out and start to roll your spine back down into your mat. One vertebra at a time. Try and stay as balanced as you can both sides. Imprint and come back through to neutral. Let's go again. Breath in. Breath out, and then arms relaxed as we imprint and start to come up. Check in with the upper body. We're soft across the chest, relaxed through our necks. And knees aren't bowing in or out. Just check in with your feet. Are they grounded? Knees staying in line with hips. Squeeze, try and activate. Think about gripping a coin in the crease where your leg turns into your bum. And then breath in there and breath out as we come back down, keeping the tilt of your pelvis. One vertebra at a time, imprint, come through to neutral. Let's hold it up on the next one. Breath in, 
breath out, imprint, steadily coming up, thinking about length. Ideally, we want a straight line between our knees and our shoulders. So you can see why we don't want to be in a big arch back overextended. We want our ribs just sitting that bit lower than our hips. Our hips fully extended or as extended as we can physically get them. If they're really tight, you know, it's going to be tough and your legs are going to be feeling it down the front. But ideally, we practice to get much more balance in our muscle strength, front and back. We want to start to go and feel that blue maximus firing up. Top of the legs coming into the bum. So let's practice. Arms relaxed, breathe in. Breathe out, now try and do a pelvic tilt in your bridge. So you, you stretch your hips more, you tuck the tailbone and you squeeze into the bum. And then breathe and release it into flexion just a tiny bit. And then breathe out, imagine pelvic tilt. So the back actually lengthens. We get the glutes working. Be careful of your knees though. Breathe in a little release. Breathe out, squeeze. If you imagine it like a pelvic tilt, it really gets then glutes work and it stops you from overloading your lower back, you know, if you've obviously, if you've got issues with the lower back. We want them glutes working for us, but we want to make sure we don't just let the lower back take the pressure. Let's do one more if we can, guys. Think, tuck in, pelvic tilt, glutes working, hold the tension in your bum, take a breath in, breathe out, lift your heels off the floor, see if you can keep them glutes active. Breathe in, lower your heels, take a break if you need to though. Breathe out, lift your heels off the floor. And then glutes still working, guys. One more. Keep that stretch. Breathe out. Lift your heels. Now you can roll down with heels lifted or you can drop them first. It's up to you. If you want the challenge, go for it. Breath in. Breath out. Now as you roll down, keep the hips extended. Keep your glutes active and heels lifted as well as stability of our spine. Nice and balanced. Oh, I put one a little bit on that one. In front and come back through to neutral. And then you can let your heels Release down, guys. Well done. Hug your knees into your chest. Release into the bum, back of the legs. Maybe pull your toes towards your shins a little bit at the same time as well as you're hugging your knees in towards you. Really hug them in. A little bit longer there to stretch into our bums a bit if we can. And then placing our hands on our knees again. We're going to circle our legs around in our hips. Just think about the leg muscles all letting go. Back of the legs, front, the glutes, the calf muscles relaxed right through to our toes as we just support our legs with our hands to circle and then let's reverse that movement and take it the other way as well nice easy way of getting some hip mobility in glue the legs together and now we can give our lumbar spine a little massage on the mat again with that circular movement one way and then reverse it and take it the other way okay let's just place our feet on the floor here first one at a time and let our knees drop out by the side let the soles of your feet come together and see if you can really let go of the legs there in that position. And then take your arms wide and open across the chest. Turn your palms up towards the ceiling. I think this is a great way of actually really letting go of the muscles. Just relax into it. If the legs want to move a bit, let them move. If the back wants to arch a little bit, extend a bit, just let it. Breathe into it. Just think about letting go of a bit more tension through every breath before we go into some gentle stretches. Check in with the neck and shoulders. If you're holding any tension there, let it go. Have that support for your neck if you need it. Okay guys, well done. Now first of all, just place your feet back on the floor. Bring your right, just above your right ankle, just above your left knee, so you hook the leg over. Now we're gonna bring our hands and bring them around the back of our left leg as we pull our left leg in towards us. That obviously forces the right leg in towards us as well, but it's actually the right side that we're going to feel the stretch in our bum. And maybe you'll feel it in the back of your leg a little bit as well. Just hold it there for a moment. Try not to tense into your neck. Keep the upper body as relaxed as you can. And then release that foot down. Let's swap them legs over. So left leg coming across right leg, and then we just draw the right leg in. Bringing our hands, if we can, around the back of the leg to draw it in further. But if you don't... Um, need to do that to feel a stretch, then don't do it. If you're already feeling a stretch here, or maybe you can just pull the leg across a bit and see if that gives you a stretch into the bum just by using the arms instead. But if we can get it um, lifting, then obviously we can get it further around into the top of the leg and the glutes there where we've just worked them. Okay, and then we'll do a hamstring stretch. So we're going to get the legs straight. If you've got a band, feel free to use it. 
So you can bring your balance around your right foot now, or you can just hold on to the back of your right leg, so back of the thigh or the calf, not the back of the knee though. Work to get your leg as straight as you can before you bring it into your stretch. So don't straighten into a stretch. Get a straight leg, let it go a little bit, and then pull it in so you get a good stretch. Now if you're using the band, obviously we might be pulling our, uh, the front of our feet, top of our feet towards our shins, which is going to stretch our lower leg. So you decide whether you want to over, you want to stretch that bit or you really want to focus on hamstring here a bit more. So if you do, I would point the toes away from your hips a little bit. Or you can do a combination of the two. So maybe hold for a few moments with the point, the toes pointed away and then change it and bring them in towards the shins. Okay, good, let's swap sides. If you're using a band, you can just bring one foot in and take the other foot out. If not, just swap legs. Extend the other leg down the mat, nice and flat. Get this leg straight and slowly pull it into a gentle stretch. Make sure it's not shaking, not trying to curl up the pelvis or pull the other leg off the floor. In fact, the other leg is pushing flat in opposition to stretch the front of the leg and the hip and to get the best stretch in the back of the leg that we can. Maybe bringing that into a bit more uh, flexion of toes towards shins. If you want to stretch the lower leg a bit more. Well done. Okay, loosen your band, soften your knee, bring your foot out, pop the band down if you're using it. Give both legs a little shake out down the mat, guys. Just really shake them on the mat. Just let go of the tension, that's it. Extend it down the mat. Bend the knees and releasing them. And then bending our knees, placing our feet on the floor. We're going to bring our knees over to one side and roll onto that side and bring ourselves up. Now we're going to have our legs one side if we can. Now we're up. So we come up and the legs are still one side. Or we bring our legs out in front if we can't sit upright here. If we can sit upright, we've got a good chance of being able to lift that hand over our head and bring it towards our feet to create a stretch in the side. If not, just hold it where you are. Be careful of the hip and the knee because you will create a stretch with that inward rotation of the knee and hip on that opposite side. That's it, just do what you can. Don't pull on the shoulder or the neck. Think about lifting out of your hip. Well done guys, let's try that on the other side. So just swap the legs over, we'll keep them in front of you, if not. You might find one side harder than the other. I find this side a bit more challenging. I have to really get hold of that leg. So I'm just a bit tighter in the, the knee and the hip joint on this side. Let's see how you go. And then stretching. So remember you're reaching your hand towards your feet. So it's that opposition we're finding in that stretch. Well done. Good work, guys. And then release. Place your hands down. And then see if you can tuck the knees straight under and sit them underneath your hips. If not, come into this position however it's comfortable for you. Let's cat curl the spine here to stretch the back. Push up through your chest, separate your shoulder blades. Focus on that upper part of the back first. Just have your head and neck in a comfortable position for you. Really separate the shoulder blades. Let them drop a little bit. And now focus on your pelvis, trying to tuck your tailbone down towards the back of your knees. Use your tummy muscles. So you get a nice bit of tummy activation to try and stretch the mid-lower back and lengthen it out there. And then release it. And now just cat curl the whole spine. Gentle stretch, not forcing anything. Maybe looking down towards the legs there as well. And then we release and we're going to come up onto our knees. Now I'm going to try and stretch a little bit through the front with both um, knees on the floor. So what you're going to do is try and pick one of your um, ankles up and your feet on one side. And then you're going to do your pelvic tilt on that side. So you're trying to flatten your back and see if you feel that pull coming down the front. Now it's going to stretch your quad and your hips. Try and do the tuck. Obviously, if it's not comfortable for your knees, then maybe go to bringing the other leg forward and just do your pelvic tilt instead of lifting the leg up. But see how that feels. See if you can get a good stretch down the front. Remember, do the pelvic tilt so we get that right into the top of the leg and into our hip. Then release that leg down and we'll try the other side. That's it. Do what you can. Lift, I'd lift the leg up rather than trying to pull it up because the hamstring might not like having to do that work of trying to pull the leg up in this position and you might get a bit of cramp, so just be aware of that. But once you've got hold of your leg, do your pelvic tilt. Remember your option, you can always just be upright and have one leg forward instead. Or you can lay flat on the mat and pull your heel to your bum laying flat, that's the other option. Well done. 
and then release it. And then we can just place our hands straight down on the floor again, tuck our shoulders into the back, tuck your toes underneath you, and lift your knees to bring you into downward facing. So we now feel that stretch all the way down the back of the body. Reach in with our arms, lengthen in the spine, and then we're gonna to start to bend our knees as much as we need to, and walk our hands back, so our weight is in our legs again, our knees are unlocked, our legs are in line with our hips. We're looking between our thighs in that forward fold. And now we're going to use our core and stack our spine up. Free flexion, one vertebrae at a time. To bring us back up to standing, shoulders drop into the back, lifting through the crown of the head at the top. Well right, guys, now you're upright. Bring one arm across your body. We finish with our shoulder and neck stretches once we're upright. So shoulders first without pulling on the elbow and then swap for the other side and then we'll take a little stretch for the neck if it's comfortable for us if your neck is already really tight I wouldn't be pulling on it maybe just try hand on the head let the opposite arm and shoulder relax away you don't don't try and force a big stretch just maybe a gentle bit of movement and you can even just do a little bit of rotation and turn to look towards your armpit as well and then come back to the middle and lift the head up to upright. And we'll try that on the other side. Hand on the head first. Other arm becomes really heavy and the shoulder pulls down. For some of you, that might already create a little bit of a gentle stretch here. Obviously, if you've got the flexibility and it's not uncomfortable, then feel free to take that further. And then add in the rotation in as well. Looking towards the armpit. And then turning back to the center. Lifting the head up to center. Roll your shoulders out backwards now. Let's release all that tension. Roll forwards. And then lift your shoulders up to your ears and let them go. Lift them up to ears and let them go. This time lift your arms up to the ceiling and let them swing and go. Now we'll add the legs in, a little bit of bend of the knees and the hips. And we'll do all of that for a couple more times just to release any tension out of the body. Shake the legs and arms out to finish, guys. Get any tension left out of your body. Well done, everyone. Great work.